Before we can derive expressions for the current and voltage relationships in a PN junction when an external voltage is applied, we need to look first at the width and the charge stored in the, in the depletion region at equilibrium with no external vo voltages applied. As we do this, we look at the more generalized and more common case of, of uh, different doping concentrations in the two regions. Specifically, N sub A, the doping concentration on the P side, is going to be greater than N sub D, the doping concentration on the N side. In this first chart, we show the uh, carrier concentrations on both sides of the depletion region. So here's the depletion region. Right there is the PN junction. You'll notice that the depletion region extends greater or a, a larger distance into the N region because the N doping, the N sub D doping concentration is less than the N sub A doping concentration. So we're calling the distance into the N region X, X sub N and the distance from the junction into the P region, we're calling that X sub P, so it's here at a point negative X sub P. The doping concentrations P sub P is the majority whole concentration on the P side. So the, 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 the uh, regular script P stands for the whole concentration. The subscript means the whole concentration on the P side. And of course, it's just equal to N sub A because N sub A is so much greater than, typically so much greater than the intrinsic um, carrier concentrations that uh, we just make the approximation that the whole concentration is just equal to the acceptor concentration. Now down here we have N sub P zero. So N, that's the electron concentration, sub P, on the P side, and zero refers to the thermal equilibrium so the N carriers, the electrons on the P side, are minority carriers, and they exist because of thermal generation. And N sub P0, then, is the equilibrium car uh, concentration of the minority carrier electrons on the P side. Similarly, on the N side, N sub N is the electron carrier concentration on the N side, and it's just equal to N sub D, the donor doping concentration. And similarly, P sub N zero refers to the thermal equilibrium hole concentration on the N side. Once again, any holes that exist on the N side are due to thermal generation, and the equilibrium value we're going to call P sub N zero. At equilibrium, with no voltage um, applied, there will be a, a um, uncovered proton for every electron that diffused into the P side. And every one of those electrons will have combined to fill a vacancy in a covalent bond that resulted from the P-type doping. So there'll be just as much negative charge in the depletion region on the P side as there will be positive charge on the depletion region on the N side. In other words, the charge stored on the N side, on the P side will equal the charge stored on the N side. But because the doping concentration is greater on the P side, the, valence, uh, the uh, vacant valent bonds, covalent bonds, will be more closely, uh, higher density, if you will, and so it won't take as much space in the P side, the higher, dop higher uh, doping concentrated P side, it won't take as much space there as it takes on this side where the concentration is less. Thus, the um, electrons that diffused over were more widely separated. Didn't say that very well, but the bottom line is, is that when the concentration, the doping concentrations are not the same, the overlap or the, the amount of the junction uh, depletion region on the higher concentrated doping side will be smaller than the depletion than the depletion region on the side with a lower doping concentration. But again, the amount of charge on both sides will be equal. So this is meant to represent the width of the depletion region on the P side 
and and this axis is the um, charge density or the carrier density. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, doping density. So a greater density times a smaller width will give you the same charge as a smaller density with a greater width. The total width W then will equal x sub p plus x sub n. From dimensional analysis, we can deduce the quantity of charge. Q sub plus is the charge in the uh, p side, and Q sub n is the charge in the n side. That quantity of charge, Q plus, will simply be Q, the charge, times the cross-sectional area of the junction and uh, n sub d is the concentration of the uh, the doping concentration on the inside so really what we have here a times x sub n is the cross-sectional area times the depth here so that's the volume of the n side that gave up its electrons to flow on over into the p side so the volume times the concentration or the density gives you the number of um, electrons that would have diffused over times the charge. So the amount of charge in the this side is given by that equation and similarly the amount of charge in this side will be given by a similar kind of equation. And as we've already pointed out the charge on both sides will be equal to each other or Q plus will equal Q minus. And since they're equal to each other, we can then form the ratio of those two and say then that the ratio of X sub N, the width of the depletion region on the N doped side, divided by the width of the depletion region on the P doped side, will equal the doping concentration on the P side divided by the doping concentration on the N side. As we've already observed, the total width of depletion region will just be x sub n plus x sub p. And it can be shown, we're not going to do it here, but it can be shown that this width then is a function and given by this formula, where that should be epsilon sub s, not epsilon sub naught, that should be epsilon sub s, where epsilon sub s is equal to 11.3 times epsilon naught or 11.7 times epsilon naught. In other words, the electrical permittivity of silicon is 11.7 times as great as the electrical permittivity of free space. Or epsilon, the uh, permittivity for silicon is 11.7 times 10 to the minus 14th. Now, as we've already observed, Q sub J, which is the charge, the amount of charge stored on either side of the junction, is equal to Q sub plus, or is also equal to Q sub minus. And we want to come up with an expression for that Q sub J. So where we're going is down here to this formula. We're going to start by noting that um, we can rearrange this, and we can write that X sub P is equal to x sub n times n sub d over n sub a. We can use this expression for x sub p and plug it in here for this x sub p and get then that w is equal to x sub n plus x sub n times n sub d over n sub a. If you factor out the x sub n and solve for x sub n, you get then that x sub n is equal to n sub a times w over n sub a plus n sub d. Now if we plug this expression for x sub n into our expression up here that we deduced for q plus, and keeping in mind that q plus equals q minus equals q sub j, which is where we're wanting to go. So plug this value in here for x sub n and you get Q sub J is equal to A, the cross-sectional area, times Q, the quantity, uh, the uh, charge constant, times this expression times W. Now if we take this expression, this formula for W, and plug it into here, 
we get then what we're looking for. And that is the amount of charge stored in either side, in either part of the depletion region, is equal to this expression. We're going to need this expression in a little, a little later in this chapter to derive the voltage and current relationships in diodes when we've got uh, external vo voltages applied.